Hey, welcome back again. Uh, this time in Little Bits of Lisp, we're going to look at function lambda lists. Nice and simple. So let's just define some very simple functions and see what we're allowed to do in the arguments. Well, uh, the simplest case of call, of course, is we just list some arguments. So this function takes x and y, and it's going to add them together. And then uh, once you've compiled it, you'll see that little flash of me compiling it uh, with control C, control C, uh, if you're following along at home. Um, we can call test zero with say one and two, we get three or one and 20 and we get 21, you know. So the function's clearly working, but there are more things we can do with this. Um, well, let's start seeing some problems actually. If we pass in too few arguments, let's just say we pass in one argument, it's gonna complain, invalid number of arguments, one. Um, if we pass in three arguments, again, we're gonna get invalid number of arguments. So with this definition, we're saying it has to be two has to be two arguments. So let's make another function. We'll copy and paste that. We'll change its number. And then we're going to say that y is going to be optional in this case. And for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the results. So I'm going to do list x and y. Um, sorry, list the results. List the arguments. So it's going to make a list with two elements in it, whatever x is and whatever y is. Now let's go and call test1. And we're going to pass in 20 and 30. And we see we get back a list with 20 and 30 in it. Cool. What if we only pass in one argument? Then nil, uh, sorry, y is going to default to nil. So our list is going to contain 20 and nil. No problem. What if we pass in too many arguments? So 30 and 40. Then we're back in the first case again, invalid number of arguments. So this one is optional, but we can't obviously provide more than that. Let's say... In another case, oh, actually, while we're still here, let's look at one other part of this. Let's say this was add, right? I compiled that again, and I go back to test one. Now, if we pass in two numbers, this is going to be fine, right? If I pass in, we add them together, easy. But if I only pass in one, this is going to crash because we've, let me bring up the code again. X is going to be 20 but y is gonna be nil, and then you're gonna try and add a number to nil, that's not gonna work. So it's gonna throw an error, and rightly so. So we need to provide a default value. And we do that by going to the y, wrapping in a list, and giving a default value. In this case, actually, we'll do zero. That makes the most sense. So test one with 20 and 30 gives us 50, and test one with just 20 gives us 20. So in that case, x, became 20 and y took its default value of zero because it wasn't provided. Of course, you, if you pass in the wrong value, like nil or a string or something like that, it's still gonna have the same error, but that's on you. Um, and we're gonna see this uh, optional stuff come up again. The, uh, sorry, the default value come up again. Let's clear this and try something else. Let's say we want to take any number of arguments so I'm going to do, let's get rid of this, I'm going to say at rest, and then we'll call it args. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the length of args. And I'm also going to print it, because it might just be useful to see what they are. Compile that, go and run tests. Actually, I'd like test one to stay as it was, and I'm going to go and recompile this as test two. So test two, we pass in no arguments. We can see that args, the value of args was nil, which makes sense. We've, again, there's nothing been passed in, so there's nothing, this, this is going to be a list with nothing in it. So we get nil, and the length of the empty list is obviously zero. Let's pass in one argument, and now args is a list with 10 in it, and the length is one. And now, as you would expect, this is a list with 10 and 20 in it, and the length is two, and so on and so on, you know? So that is rest. And rest, um, we can have arguments before the rest. So if I go over here, I'm gonna make this number three. We'll say x and the rest args. So let's, what should we do here? I'm gonna make a list of x and the args. I'm going to clear this, 
do test three. I'm going to start just by passing in nothing. We'll see what happens. Ah, we get a complaint about an invalid number of arguments. And that makes sense because X is required. It's not optional. Um, so we have to provide this and we didn't. So it's throwing an error. So let's pass in 10 there. And now we can see that X was 10, fine. And args was nil. And we print it out here and then we put args in the list so we can see it here. What happens if we keep adding arguments? Probably can guess at this point. If we pass in a second one, now that gets put into the args list. So note that's the list. Um, so we made a list containing 10 and the list of arguments, which in this case is just a list with 20 in it. Let's pass in two more arguments. And again, you should be seeing the pattern by now. We are getting the first argument goes into X and all of the other arguments are put as a list into args. So that's cool. So that's, that's another way we can use rest. Um, it's worth noting that you should never use optional um, and rest together. It's not allowed. Don't do it. Um, again, I don't. I think it's one of those undefined areas. I, it's probably worth actually, yeah, no, it's definitely worth checking the spec to see what the correct behavior is. But the short version is don't do this. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's look at something different. We've got a variable number of arguments. We've got optional arguments. Um, but often we actually want to be able to provide keyword arguments. You might have seen things like that in Python. So let's go and do that. We're going to go down here and we'll have test four. And we'll start out by removing all of the arguments and we're just going to go and key and then foo and bar. And the result of this function is going to be a list with foo and bar in it. And we're just going to play with this and see how it behaves. I'm going to clear this. Test four. Now, first thing, call it with no arguments. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we see from this that these are optional, these keyword arguments. Um, so foo by default was given the value nil and so was bar. Okay, let's see what happens if we just pass in one. Right? This is an error you're going to see quite often when you're working with keyword arguments and you muck something up. I muck things up a lot. Odd number of keyword arguments. It's like it's looking at this and it's going, okay, now I'm meant to be looking for keyword arguments. But you've, I've only got one thing. Keyword arguments are always in pairs. So something has gone wrong. And it just stops and throws an error for you. It's not the most descriptive thing, but you know at that point you've got to look at your uh, keyword args because something's wrong. And we can see here it's about test four. So we know where to start looking. So let's get rid of that. So let's see how we're meant to call test four. We're meant to call test four by specifying foo as a keyword and then one or whatever value you like. So we can do foo 10. And we can see now foo has the value 10 and bar has still got nil. So let's specify bar as well. Bar is now 20. Right. Okay. Now foo and bar are both specified and our list contains both of those values. Awesome. Does order matter? Let's take bar and move it before the foo. No, it's completely fine. You can specify the arguments in any order you like, but it's always in this kind of pairs together. It's kind of one of the interesting areas where we don't have Lisp force us to uh, put things in braces or anything like this, but that is just how it's done. These are pairs in this way, in line. Well, that's cool. So what happens then if we do, um, what happens actually, let's, uh, if we were going to replicate that issue we had earlier, let's say this is a plus. And now let's do this as test five come back over here. Now I'm going to bring up that last result just so we can see what happens when we specify foo and bar. No problem. Um, let's call test five in the same way. Great. We get 30. We specify both of these arguments. It's awesome. Similar to condition to up here. When we specified both, it was all right. It was only when we didn't specify some stuff that things went wrong. So let's not specify foo. We hit return and suddenly, ah, nil is not a number. We're back in that same problem as with the optional, right? So let's abort that. But just like with the optional, you can specify a default value. So let's specify foo's default value to be zero. 
and uh, call it again. And now it works, of course, but um, now if we take away the bar, we're going to get the same problem. Nil is not a number. So again, we've got to go back and specify the default value for bar. And I don't think I will uh, get rid of that just yet. Okay, so now if we call test5 with uh, no arguments, both uh, foo and bar have numeric values, so this addition works. And we can specify foo to be 10, uh, we can specify bar to be 10, we can specify both of them, um, and things work as we expect. So, keyword arguments are optional, they can be provided in any order. Um, the syntax is to use a keyword, and then to provide the value. Um, and just like with the optional arguments, um, you can define a default value, and that will be used if you don't specify it. Notice, of course, that just like with the optional, if you go and pass in nil, you're going to get that nil is not a number argument. This is only going to be used if you don't provide the value at all. It's not whether, the, uh, whether foo is nil or not, it's whether you specified it. So that's very important. And just like with optional, again, we can provide arguments before there. So we have x, we're going to say x plus foo plus bar. And we'll call this test six and compile it. And then go over here. I'm going to clear this. Do test six. And how should we do this? Well, if we provide, if we pass no arguments, we're going to get an exception, right? Because um, zero is an invalid number of arguments. Because now we have one of these mandatory arguments right here. Um, so at the very least, we've got to call it with that's with one value. Let's say a hundred. Now, because we didn't specify foo and bar, but they do have default values. So this is going to be zero and that's going to be zero. So 100 plus zero plus zero is 100. That's what we expect. Good. So let's provide bar. Excellent. Foo wasn't specified, so we got its default value of zero. Bar was set to be 10. Uh, X is 100 again, so it's 110 is the right value. And of course, for completeness, let's, uh, <laughs> let's type it wrong. Uh, let's provide foo. So, the kind of patterns are emerging, things are what we expect them to be. So we have optional, rest argument, and keyword arguments. You will see very commonly in, um, in common lisp in functions. Macros, which we'll get to another day, have different lambda lists. There are different areas of common lisp can have these different lambda lists. They're all defined in the hyperspec, but these are the bits that you're going to be seeing the most. Normally, you don't get combinations of optional and rest or optional and key. That's really kind of undefined. Well, if it's, you get different results and different implementations depending on how you use that. It's not a good idea. But you can use rest and key together. And that's a rather interesting one. So let's do that. If we say and rest args and then and key, let's call it args actually. Um, and then we, what have I done? Print args, test seven. Watch what happens when we run test seven, just the same way as we just did for test six. We get exactly the same value, but args contains, is a list that contains all of these arguments after the uh, mandatory one. It's rare that you need this, but sometimes it comes up and it can be useful. So it's just worth knowing that that is one of the combinations that is valid. Rest cannot be used after key. Uh, you can't have key or rest more than once inside these forms. Um, they always come after your mandatory arguments. And uh, yeah, don't combine with optional. <laughs> but I mean, I think that's enough to get started. And that's, I don't know, this has actually been quite a long episode of nearly 15 minutes. So it's a good time to stop. I'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging around.